Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Dak Prescott, nice win versus a tough defense with the Jets. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> So before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only are you supporting the channel by becoming a member, but you also get even more Quarterback School content. So if you dig the channel, you love the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Hop over there, join, become a member. The link is in the video description. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. First one here, third and two. This is going to be a simple RPO. But I put it on here because I love the fact that I think it just shows Mike McCarthy evolving to the times. It doesn't have to be that hard anymore when you incorporate this RPO game. And I just don't think it was something that was there the last time he was calling plays. So we're going to run inside zone to the left. That linebacker on the left hash is who we're reading. He hangs there. We got to throw the bubble. Now you got to block on the perimeter. But this is third and two. We don't have to run our head into the side of a building every single time to get a first down. We can come out here and just simply read someone. And I know that this isn't new football, but I do think it's new for Mike. And so to be able to see this and realize we're blocking inside zone. So these six are going to block the six in the box. They identify these four down and these two linebacker types, we'll call them. Okay, so on the outside, we're going to block bubble. So there's the bubble. We're going to come up here two on two. So whatever this conflict defender does, he cannot be right. So if he hangs here, just flip it out to the bubble. If he gets with at the snap, well, then we just hand it off and we go get a first down. So it's just the horizontal stretch incorporating the way offense is played nowadays. Nice and easy. We want to run the ball. They take it away, flip it out. Easy completion, first down. Really nice job. Again, watch how simple this is. Reading 57, the linebacker on the left. He hangs there. We're out. Again, you can see the combo blocks. The left guard is going up to the star. Right guard, right tackle going up to the DB type on the right. Single digit. We got it. Flip it out. First down. Nice blocking on the perimeter. Let's go. Next one here. Nice little sluggo up top. We're fighting through one-on-one -on -one up top. We're going to run that little slant. Go. Get off me. Dak does a nice job putting the ball exactly where he wants, go up and high point that thing. The quarterback has to get it up and down before the safety can make a play. We're going to call it some iteration of quarters. Again, I think Dak doing a nice job here, giving his guy a shot, putting on him, probably a penalty as well. Sluggo to me just means slant and go. And again, these aren't routes on air, so you're going to have to deal with some DB types here. So as we get into this, if this is the matchup we want to attack versus this matchup down here, which I think is a good idea, not attacking at the bottom. Up, sell the slant, and then you got to get out of it. And the quarterback, depending on what the coverage is, if it's open, this is the near safety. You've got to get the ball up and down before the near safety can go make a play on that ball or collision your wide receiver. So it's, it's not the easiest look, but this is a nice way to essentially capture a one-on-one -on -one versus aggressive corners and quarters. Shrug, get it up and down. Nice touch, great weight on that ball. Put it right where he wants. That's a hell of a catch as well. Big chunk, let's go. Again, you can see the action back here. He, he shrugs the slant. That's what that little kickback is. So he kind of shrugged the slant, uh, get back. And again, this is as about as all your cleats in the ground as you're going to see Dak. He's always been, for me, a bit toesy, but that's a really nice throw right there. Third and six right here. This is a really nice scramble from Dak. For me, there's nothing really there. The back doesn't do a great job in pass protection. We got to go. You see that lane open up. Go get it yourself. Now, you know, I think Dak has always been a mobile guy, a guy who can go get it, who can create a little downhill. I don't think he's ever been like an elite runner, you know, per se. And you can kind of see the end of it, kind of the stiffness here of just being able to kind of like, you know, just get down and protect yourself. Unless you're going to put a move on that cat and score, you know, that's a big shot. <laughs> and again, I, I know they won a lot of games without him last year, but quarterbacks are too important to their team to be taking big ass shots like that. I just don't understand it. I consider it like the Josh Allen effect. You almost like lose your mind out there sometimes running it. Just get down and protect yourself. It's a great scramble for a first down. Know where you are. It's the awareness element. 
just get down right there. You have a first down. You do not need to take heavy collisions on your hip like that with a shoulder pad. It doesn't make sense to me. You're not, you're, you're out of control. You're running too fast to make a big time move down the field. Protect yourself. He makes a good decision to go here. And again, you can see how important the pass protection is from the back. He's got to get over there and blunt that cat. 57 looks like he's significantly bigger than 23. You got to go blunt him and allow us to throw it. He, you lose an edge. Now we got to go. Now, luckily, four can do it. But man, we don't want to take hits like that. Next one here, third and four touchdown pass. This is a unique one up top. We're going to get a corner by the number one and a flat by the tight end, the number two. The corner up top, if I'm being honest, gets a little bit cute and kind of gets caught with his feet underneath him. He thinks he's going to go pick off on this corner. And Dak does a nice job kind of, I don't think he's shrugging it. I think he's going to throw this corner and just turns it down. And so he basically goes flat, no, corner, no, right there, ah, back to the flat. So it's like a one, two, one. And again, how this thing happens, man, these plays in the red zone happen quickly. And you really got to be decisive. I think this is a really nice job from Dak being able to sort through, which is a pretty unique look. So what they're trying to do here defensively is they're essentially in and outing this thing. So what does that mean? That means these two and maybe even these three are over these two. So when we get this to the flat, they switch this off. These two players right here switch this off. So what ends up happening here is you run a flat into a corner who's outside leverage on you, right? Like you don't have to be a genius to know like that. That's not the look we're going for. Then you think, all right, well, if they switch it off, we should have this corner back the other way. I don't disagree. Theoretically, you probably should. They still have to cover it and they do a good job covering it. Now, this is the part where this is, gets a little bit tricky is this corner now is a really good player. He thinks he's going to get cute and go pick off this corner in the end zone. Well, he, as soon as he goes to do that, he creates just a little bit too much space, and then we're able to throw, come back to the flat. So the flat goes out there, kind of turns around, and so we were able to go essentially one to the flat, no, two to the corner, no, three back to the flat, yes, and because that corner goes and tries to pick that thing off and just opens up his feet like that, it creates so much space for us. We throw it to the flat and we can get into the end zone. So that's a lot of me talking to say we threw a flat late for a touchdown. But watch it play out up top. Read the corner out. See that corner? See that just that little move right there? As soon as you see him kind of, uh, we got him. Catch it, fall forward. Nice job sniffing out the end zone. So really nice job from Dak. That's not an easy play. This defense is good. Ford does a really nice job here of sorting through what I would consider as a difficult look, non-traditional look. No, doesn't put the ball in harm's way, and we get a touchdown. Next one here, we're backed up on the three. We get a Mike McCarthy special here, a little dragon up top. That's a slant and a flat paired with a stick. I would guess this is a middle field closed, middle field open read or closed away from rotation read. What that means is essentially if we get closed, Slant flat is as good as it gets for most NFL teams as far as what you want to do. You're going three-step under center, a little time warp throwback, big chunk, everything except holding on to the rock there at the end. But, man, this is this is old-school Mike. I love it. Pittsburgh, PA, right here. Slant, money. Flat, okay, a lot of West Coast teams call this dragon. You can have a whole video on it. You read this flat defender. He widens, put that thing right behind his ear. Boop. I think right here they have it paired with what I would call stick. Back the other way. So the read when you get kind of like your plays over the course of the week, it would most likely be, hey, if we catch closed, let's work the dragon. If we catch open, let's work the stick. If we catch closed rotation, so if it's closed and the safety is comes down late here, you don't want to throw a slant into that either. We can also come back and work the stick. So lots of different options here, lots of different ways to read it. It's certainly wide open here. We're reading the flat defender up top, 44 widens, put it right behind him, on the body, on the break, big chunk, let's go. Again, it's just fun to see, you know, Mike get into his old bag here as far as things he likes to do. You get into this, what I'm used to calling super flank, you know, we got I call it the old check mark, high school Harry uh, wing, super wing there to the right. Motion out of it, get to two by two, and just run stick dragon. It's not that hard. On the body, on the break, big chunk. Let's go. Next one here, third and one. Everyone's favorite, sprint option. 
We're going to sprint to the left. We're going to throw a flat to the number two. It's wide ass open because the number one gets a little friendly fire, nice little soft rub. That's as open as you will ever see on third and short. This is bad defense as much as anything else. It's also one of my least favorite plays. I feel like we've seen it quite a bit this year coming back. But again, you know, if it's going to be open like that, we'll take it all day, every day. It, sh- it should never be this wide open. They do a little yo-yo motion with it. At least they add some element of motion with it, although it doesn't necessarily impact the play for my money. This is just way too easy. So the idea being here that sprint left and then the option route, it's really not an option. It's just a flat. The decision usually is what are you going to do with this number one player? I like the idea here of being able to come in and up and kind of to the corner or back out because you do get this opportunity for friendly fire where you you bring in this person to it and maybe this guy has the flat. So if he's got this flat man to man, he's got to fight through essentially two people. Right, He's got to fight through our number one receiver, and he's got to fight through his own guy going this way to kind of go make this tackle all for third and one. So it's really tough ask to do in that regard. Now, it's not a tough ask. <laughs> this is where it gets a little hairy for me. If this player is involved in the number two, well, then it's a hell of a lot harder play, and we don't really have an answer. But when he takes himself out of it and thinks he's going to go up there and make a, a stop in the run game or go try to you know, blitz, if you know they're blitzing, yeah, great. It's a great pressure call. Thank you very much. It cuts wide open like this. Again, watch the number one receiver at the bottom. Run into the safety covering the number two. Whoop. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. That was totally by accident. Please don't call a flag for me accidentally rubbing you on purpose on third and short. Dak Prescott going to your left. You want to carve this thing downhill if you can. He does. Put it right on him. Don't miss a layup. Nice first down. Mike, why would you do it to me? Now I got to talk about it. This is the dreaded stick spacing. Spacing versus man-to-man, y'all. No bueno. Right here, you throw the check down. Luckily, they can't tackle. It turns into at least a positive play. This is one of the many reasons why I don't love spacing. The idea that if it's not there, whatever's on the front side, which for me, stick is a zone play, most likely, most often to pair it with the spacing, if you get man, there's really no good place to go with the ball. You know, maybe you could throw it to the flat right away, but this idea being if this is stick, so up top will run stick to me as a flat with this stick concept. That's traditional stick. Spacing to me is sit over the ball with a wide release hitch and then with a check down. Where do you want to go with the ball versus middle field close man coverage? There is nowhere to go with the ball. Whoever's got the flat just runs with the flat. Whoever's got the stick is right there. Whoever's got the sit is right there. Hitch right there. Now, luckily, the Jets run like a match coverage with their interior guys, and then this is man-to-man, so he's going to run with this check down. He's, there's nowhere to go with the ball. What do, you, what do you want him to do? You know, I don't know the answer here playing quarterback. You know, you could say maybe you should throw the, the flat up top, but not really, right? <laughs> The guy's running with him. He goes over the top of him. The stick, no. Sit, no. Hitch, no. You know, if anything, you, you would almost skunk the check down. Now, he makes them tackle. They can't tackle. It turns into a positive play. But you can see maybe some of the evidence about why you wouldn't like spacing versus man-to-man. And I know I talk about it like side-eye on this channel. In addition, when your right tackle steps all over your tight end, you get dump trucked. <laughs> it's a bad feeling. It's a bad feeling right there if you're the right tackle. Watch out. Nice job making a miss and at least getting something positive out of it. Third and seven here. Nice completion down here to the bottom slot. This to me is an iteration of like shorty comeback and like search routes. So it's not true kind of all stop at the sticks. I think this is a nice job from Dak going three no hitch kind of in rhythm. With this play, so for me here, I think sometimes you'll hear me on this channel say, golly, I I really don't like it anytime you go up and everybody stops at the stick. So I think the traditional play that I'm not a huge fan of is like nine stop, nine stop or hitch. Everybody kind of all run this route. To me, this play is not that. This play is a little bit more outside comebacky. So you get past the sticks and come back. So more true comeback on the outside. And then on the inside, what I'm used to calling a search route. 
So you can come up here and you've got options. You can turn out, you can turn in. It's like a deeper option. And the reason I say it's this kind of route is because these two guys are doing different routes. So he turns inside. I think he turns outside. So again, just probably giving them freedom to win based on leverage. I personally think it's just a great way to play football, to trust your guys to make good decisions. Again, you can see the route up top, the number two. That doesn't look like the route at the bottom. The route at the bottom is free access. Put it on him. One, two, three, boom. Nice job. Again, to, for my money here, you know, three of the four get first downs. And I'm not throwing it to the number one guy up top. I just pick my poison somewhere else. Nice conversion, nice decision, nice design. Not just like vanilla flavored turnaround. These are, you know, good opportunities to win up top. Next one here, third and seven. And this is a completion to the bottom on what I'm going to call a slant or a dart. Kind of more slanty than darty. I know he doesn't get a first down, but I like it. And it's on this video because for me, it shows Dak seeing the field well. He's hot to his left. He's got a free runner. He's got an answer to his face. To me, that's sound football. You'll often hear guys in the league say, if you get a completion on third down, it's all right. So finding a completion, making it the right throw as well, I think matters. So for me here, we're going to get a free runner. So they've only got, we've only got five blocking. This guy is unblocked. So in my world, playing quarterback, I want a hot to this side. So the hot answer is a slant. Now, hopefully he doesn't get jacked like this and he can win and go make a massive play and score. But right here, he gets jacked. The corner makes a nice play. He doesn't get a first down. You know, they're good on defense too. It can be just that simple. On the other side, it looks like we've got a fast four and like double spot. So spot, spot, corner. So all good. This to me is just sound football. And Dak is being decisive, getting the ball out of his hand, not taking hits. Boom, get it out. And again, that's a hell of a play by this corner down here, man. He's all up in his shirt, making life difficult. That's tough one-on-one -on -one slant. That's a hell of a play by the safety coming over there and cleaning that thing up, not letting him stretch for a first down. It's just good defense. They get paid too, but I love this from Dak. Again, just having answers. You see it. I mean, there's no indecisiveness, right? His eyes are to the left. He sees the safety coming. Put his foot in the ground, all his cleats in the ground. Again, rare. Put the ball right where you want. Give his guy a chance to win. They make a good play. Next one here, second and nine. We're going to rip a seam to the bottom. Middle field closed. The bones of four verticals. It's not true four verticals. We get the like hinges by the number ones. But this is a great job from Dak. Working the middle field closed player. Getting it to your dude. You know, If anything, I would say maybe a tick quicker. But if you catch middle field closed, and it's any iteration of zone, so first off, just middle field closed, it's pretty easy to see, right? He's going to work to the middle of the field. So you really have got either option here on these seam routes. So I'll draw. This is the bones of four verticals, right? Now, it doesn't matter what exactly the end route is. We're running seams here, and we're running hinges here. But to the defense, that looks like four verticals. And so if they're not going to reroute us at the number two position, so if these two players are not going to get hands on and reroute us here, we're going to have great opportunities at the seam all day. If anything, I think maybe you could quicken up the drop process. I used to eventually like to get to a shuffle and a hitch. So shuffle, quick hitch and throw. Some guys I know go three, no hitch. Some guys cut down their three and get a hitch. Some guys go three, you know, and just rip it. To me, that, that's as long as you want to take. You can see how like s every step is like spaced out, big, take your time, little hitch. Again, I think the ceiling for these things is usually 20 yards. So what? They're on the 25. So 45 should be where you want to get it up and down from before. And you see how he has to kind of settle. You know, it just looks like he slows down down here to the bottom as opposed to hitting him in stride. He's got to throttle down. Now he protects himself. But he still goes, you know, head over toes there. So, again, just quickening up that drop potentially could help you. Tighter hitch or reset, but still, that's a big chunk. This next one is rough. No, Mike, don't do it. Drag it on both sides. First quarters. We're late to the flat. Oh, my God. 
Turnover worthy play. Really should be a pick. Dak hesitates there. So for me here, double dragon just means slant, flat, mirrored. Okay, slant, flat, mirrored in my world is not great versus quarters. Okay, because you really don't want to throw a flat, you don't want to throw a slant into a quarter safety. So it eliminates the slant. Really, your only option is to just come up, raise up, and throw a flat right now. If you don't do that, you really got to get it to the check down. So it's it's not my favorite play in the world. That's why you often see this paired, what, what a lot of people in the West Coast world call Dragon Lion. Gives you a little more of a traditional quarters, middle field open beater. But this is just rough. You cannot be late to the flat like this versus a corner like the Jets got with number one. I mean, <laughs> and you can see it play out, right? Like you would have the flat catch throw right now. And you really just have to be able to see if this is either quarters or palms, you can't let him late, late, late out to the flat outside the numbers. That's all bad. You know, get a little fortunate right there. Sometimes when it's going good, it's going good. And again, you can see just kind of the indecisiveness. Watch the way that Dak kind of pulls this thing back like, uh -huh, uh -huh. so he kind of goes no to the slant. Uh -huh, uh -huh. To me, this ball should probably go to the check down. Big 4-2. Uh -huh. Late, fortunate, should be a pick. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for doing that. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, great way to support the channel, get even more Quarterback School content. Link is in the video description. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We've got RPOs, tempos, pass protection, how to beat every single coverage is the best selling course. And then we have an entire course that is an offensive system available. So if you enjoy how I talk and teach ball, you will love the courses. The link is in the video description. Get over there and enroll. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, third and three. Cowboys running mesh. Little, what I'm used to calling railroad, what most people call railroad. The throw, not perfect. A little bit behind him, but still certainly good enough for a first down. Again, I just, I'm over here half smiling just because I know you know, things that weren't in McCarthy's wheelhouse the last time he was calling plays, now he's got dialed up on third and three. To me, this is the play that everybody runs at damn near every level of football. Here's the rail. This is the mesh number two. It's paired usually with a deep hook by one of those guys and a mesh. So come back out here the other side. That's essentially the play. Some teams allow you to do like a one-off thing down to the bottom if you really love the matchup, but we're calling it for the rail and the shallow part of the mesh. So no to the rail, yes to the shallow mesh, first down. Just nice, clean, simple. You know, you're looking at third and three. You got guys right in your face. Jesus, right tackle, right guard, not on the same level. They're going to have a hard time picking up that stunt. You can see the right guard not on the same level as the right tackle. The right tackle looks like he's getting crazy depth. The right guard and everyone else looks like they're short setting. So when they're not on the same level, you can see the right guard and right tackle are not on the same level. They're going to have a hard time passing off any sort of game. So as soon as he takes the inside, we're in trouble. Now we got to eat that. So just a really nice job from Dak, you know, dealing, staring down the barrel, got a lot of green in your face, make that throw, can't get through it. It's impressive from Dak. Next one here, second and five. This is a tough sack. I'm used to calling this an Elvis Gerbach sack. I don't feel bad for letting Elvis catch a stray here. Mike McCarthy is a guy who coined it to me. So say it here. You can't take this sack. You got to be able to. Now, it's not a true Elvis Gerbeck because he doesn't run out of bounds. But you could throw this away easily. Out there, you got to throw it away, dog. Throw it away, throw it away. And again, when I say that Dak is not like an elite guy on the perimeter, stuff like this is why. I mean, he gets hawked quick. You got to throw it away. He thinks he's getting away. He's not getting away. I'm not sure he's getting away from either of those guys. Got to throw it away. Must throw it away. Now, this looks like it's supposed to be what I'm used to calling oh shit. Now, it's called oh shit screen, but it's not really a screen. So the play is essentially, you know, you can throw it. A lot of teams will run this where you like reverse out, fake it to the back, and the back is number one in the flat. It's usually paired with like an over. So everybody going that way. But right here, it looks like it's paired with this player, the number three, coming down faking, and then almost like 
running that shallow back the other way. So when the quarterback comes out of this thing and it's not there to the tailback, you set your feet and you throw it back and the defense goes, oh, shit. That's the OS part of it. So you can see that part of it. They try to get it. It's just not there. But you got to throw it away, dog. So there's the leak. Come back out. It's not there. You know, they, they do a good job covering it up. They play good defense. Don't take a sack, though. Just throw it away. Throw it in the fir- front row. Hit a sweep. Can't take that sack. Cannot take that sack. Fake. No. Nothing's there. Throw away. Again, you, know, you you be the judge. You tell me if four looks quick right here. I get it. The other guys are already have a head start, head of steam running, but man, we got to throw that away. Third and 12 here. Coming out of the two-minute warning, we're going to get a pass interference down here to the bottom slot on the seam. I love the aggressiveness. I think it's an outstanding call. We'll talk about what they're doing defensively here. But for me, this kind of exposes what what I've always thought a little bit about Dak. And he's going to – I've thought that he struggles to put the ball where he wants and be precise down the field because he's so tozy and he just doesn't generate power and things die on him. And so for me here, this is just four verticals. So, you know, third and 12 down here in the red zone, there's not a lot of great options. All go special. The logo, you're welcome. New animation, appreciate you. This looks like closed. In reality, it looks like they end up doubling here, running out. And then this guy looks like he's almost going over the top to double the number one. I mean, he's out of there. He's definitely not playing the middle of the field. So they're giving the appearance of closed man, but really it's like double, double. And so you got, and when you get these funky double coverages, you got to find one on ones. This is a one on one. I think he wins. I think the ball is just severe, not severely, the ball is just underthrown. He doesn't put it where he wants. He doesn't, he's not as precise as some other guys with their ball location and their consistency. And you, I mean, is he giving the mailbox down here to the bottom right there? Yeah. Just get it up, and you, you often hear like high back five, so high on the back five. And when he's got his back turned, you can throw it anywhere, but you can't throw it down at his toes. I mean, you can throw it anywhere catchable. And again, you know, for me, this he's always had this like bounce to his drop, and then he's up on his toes. You can see his heel off the ground, right? Like you can see his cleats right there. You got to have all your cleats in the ground. Drive that thing. Again, I mean, look where it is. It's going to hit, you know, it's going to bounce in the middle of the end zone. You got to put that thing and it's got to hit the Salvation Army logo up there. You got to throw a laser. I mean, it's missing it by yards. Fortunate, though, it gets a penalty and it works out. You got to love McCarthy coming back with another pass, touchdown pass, this time hitting the tight end across on the shallow. That takes a big hit. And he took some shots from that front. That front is for real, no dope, no joke. You know, I think the left tackle could help himself a little bit by getting a little bit more depth, but this is a really nice job from Dak. So to be able to play this thing out, what is this? This is just power pass. So power pass for my money. Damn near every team in the league runs it. We're going to bluff the edge player, and we're out into the flat. That's where we're usually trying to go with the ball. Paired with an over. Right here, they're going to pair it with a shallow, like front pylon, and then probably a back pylon. So you've got four options to the four pylons. Dak does a really nice job here buying enough time coming out of this play fake. And again, the back is usually going to cut the end man. So we bluff, cut, then we come back. The, the only thing I would say here is, you know, I know he's trying to give some help, the left tackle, meaning I know that left tackle is trying to give some help here to the right guard and like a little kickstand, but you got to be a little firmer in your base to not get blown back into the quarterback's lap. We can't have Dak Prescott taking hits like this on one-yard passes. Boom, Jesus. And it's, you know, it's not only the surge, but it's the ground. Watch the ground. Dunk. Oh, man, that's a tough shot. All for a one-yard pass. This will make Mike want to run it in, I'm telling you. Regardless, nice job from four. You can see the, the element of this. He goes full field read. No, no. Yes. Nice touch right on him. Hand off. Touchdown. Next one here, third and 14. We're going to run a little sail down here to the bottom. Switch release. Get Lamb out to the sale. Again, you know, I think Dak makes this a little harder than he has to, and I think it could be a better play if he just played it within the structure of the call. I'm not sure why he bails to the right. I don't think he has to bail to the right. I think it's late, and then it makes the throw kind of right out of bounds. 
Now, it's still a big-time conversion. Third and 14, man, not easy. So a little short motion. And again, you know, I'm going to do a video on the Dolphins soon. But I just th – this this kind of slow-ass motion, it's just dated in the league. I'm just, you're going to see everybody go start going crazy fast. So slow-ass motion. Here's that switch release. So boom, there's a switch release. The new number one or the old number two is running to the post. Lamb 88 is coming out on the sale. And so really you just need to see this corner. What does this corner do? Does he get depth and go at all with the post? Then we've got the sale. So for me here, this would probably be a five-step drop in most offenses. From gun, five, hitch, just throw it. And again, you might be like, dude, you're being a, kind of a stickler, nitpicky here. This is a big conversion, third and 14. I agree, both. But if he catches it, he can turn and run and make more of a play as opposed to catch out of bounds. Again, catch out of bounds is good. It's good to get a first down. But like, I mean, he doesn't have to move to the right, right? Like we're making this way more difficult. And again, I think he has to do it because he takes three. So one, two, three. Now he's not ready to throw and he's got to go. So again, you know, who, who knows what their drop is? I can just tell you most people here would take five and a hitch. He takes three and a hitch. He's he's early. Now he's got to go. Now we catch it on the sideline. So you can see how everything is tethered together. The connection between the drop, the timing, the depth. All those things have to work together because if they're not, things are out of sync, disjointed, and then we catch balls on the sideline. Next one here, third and three. This is a tough one. So for my money here, you know, he misses the corner. Obviously, he'd love to throw this to the tight end to the bottom for a touchdown. I think the wide receiver at the bottom – really kind of hurts this play not getting a pick or rub for the flat where the ball probably is designed to go. This corner is kind of the second option down here. And so, yeah, should Dak Prescott make this throw? Absolutely. Is he up on his toe? Yes. Does he not put it right where he wants? Yes. Okay, and keep repeating the same damn thing all the time. And, okay, if we're going to be a unit, kind of like locked in details-wise here, this to me is just spot or snag. Now, spot or snag is usually this route. Boom. Flat, paired with a corner. Okay, great, thanks. You can find that anywhere online. The thing about this, though, is this player right here, down here, most likely is not going to get the ball. He wants to get his route to impact whoever has the flat. So whoever he determines has the flat, he wants either his route or the guy covering him to make life really difficult on this player to then have to sort through getting to the flat. And really, you don't want to run. The, the coaching point here for me was always don't run where he is. Run where he's going to be and not just you, but take your guy with you. So for me here, this would be get into number one, get into him, jack him, and bring him with you. So it ends up being like a double moving pick. So he's going to jack you, go with you. Now this guy has to bubble over the top, and we can throw a flat for a touchdown. Okay, So that doesn't happen. All that being said, that doesn't happen, and Dak misses the throw. Okay, so he it's not going to happen every time. It doesn't right here. The number one at the bottom, to me, doesn't do a good job. We still have the corner. We just sky mail it. Just ever so out of reach. And again, I just think he he looks unsettled with his lower half. You know, like, uh -uh, uh -uh. we're moving backwards. We don't have to move backwards. We don't have to panic. Get all your cleats in the ground. And just make a calm, consistent stroke. So again, just watch his lower half here as you can kind of <laughs> going backwards, failing away, fall, you know, fade away, up on his heel or up on his toe. Damn. I mean, that's a throw, you know, he you're gonna make well over 90% of the time. Oh dang. If you're gonna run the terrible play that is spacing. Uh, this is now my new favorite way to do it. And so this to me is essentially the check down swing with a lead blocker. And this might not be true spacing. Uh, back in the day, there used to be a play, God, what was it called? Like 397 power pass or something, 396 power pass. And it was this kind of footwork. Man, you know who was great at it? It was Jeff Garcia. That dude could get through this play like nobody's business. But it is essentially a slant and then... If it was true spacing, it would be stick, hitch, flat, swing. Well, that flat sucks. 
I mean, a lot of it sucks. But to make it better, let's go lead blocker, swing. So now we now it's we get this like pseudo screen element to it. So we've got the slant you don't like into that split field safety. Okay. You know, these guys look like they're right on top of each other and watching the bears. And then we get it out to the swing screen. So it, it's it's just got some added flavor that tastes a little bit better than the normal spacing issues. So you can see there that that's that whatever those hitches are look like they're kind of too close together. The slant's not there. You don't like it. All right. Yes to this. And then we've got a lead blocker. So just a little cool wrinkle. The Cowboys aren't the first team that I've seen do it. I have seen it show up more this year than in years past. I just like the way that it flows. Dak plays it with great rhythm. You know, that was always the thing I remember about Jeff is he would play this play so quick. It would be like, no, no, yes, just like that. One, two, three, boom, throw. The throw is a handoff, and that allows for the yak. Let's go. I'm smiling again over here. Third and five. McCarthy's in quads. Let's go. Get a little pick. Get meshy with a corner. Nice little chunk. Again, now, is this an intentional rub? I don't know, but I love the fact that they're in quads. Look like they're going quick. An easy completion to the flat. Let's go. So concept-wise, what is this? This is we are going to line up in quads. Quad just means four eligibles to a side. We're going to run the back. He's the number four right into the flat immediately. So with in, it doesn't really matter what these routes are. They can be anything. There's a chance for three picks or rubs and really six people in that space. So whoever has this fourth eligible, whoever it is, and it really doesn't matter, they've got to fight through these three routes and the three defenders if it's man coverage. So you've got just all sorts of issues. And what ends up happening here is the number two is going to fight through and he's going to end up clicking whoever's got the flat. And so they can't sort it out. He ends up falling and now he's late and now it turns into a big chunk down the sideline. So I love coming out in quads. I, I think it's an untapped area in the NFL passing game to use quads. They can't sort it out right here. You can see the little accidental on-purpose friendly fire. Dink, he's down. Now it's a big chunk. And it's just mesh with a flat in the corner. Again, really nice job. I like going quick as well. Don't miss a layup. Put it right on him. Nice throw. Punt return right. Last one here. Another nice little chunk down here to the bottom. We're going to hit the slot number two on what I'm used to calling a bluff wheel. Man, I feel like I've drawn this up three times this from this past weekend. Again, I really like it with the backside not running a check post. I'm running kind of a check shallow. Dak's going to do a nice job here. You're going to pump the swing screen, and then you're going to rip that kind of bluff wheel. Nice job moving in the pocket. Good pass protection. That's a heck of a chunk, man. First and 15. Dial it up. Love it. So what I'm used to calling this little orbit motion, orbit motion just meaning that we're going around or orbiting the quarterback. So around, come around, and we're going to fake like we're going to swing screen. So just throw it out here would be like a swing screen, block, block. Well, we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is pump that swing screen, and then we're going to pair it most oftentimes with a post. And where the ball ends up going here, where it normally ends up going, on a bluff, like you're going to block, wheel. And it's really just a glorified hole shot. And again, catching strays back here, get into this thing with a the shallow. There's no reason to run someone up like this. Hilarious. A really nice job. This is a tough throw to the wide side, hole shot, off a pump fake. Corner can't come off. You're able to put it right on him. Again, you can see the flat defender down here to the bottom, the defender over the number two. He's going to surge. He thinks he's going to go tackle that screen. No. Right into the hole. Nice job. Well designed. Nice offensive architecture. Nice play call. Great job from Dak. Again, driving this ball. You know, not getting into those like touch throws right here. He, to me here, he gets into this throw. You can see his cleats, all his cleats in the ground right there. So he's not toesy at all. He's driving that thing. Ripping that thing. Putting it right where he wants. That's a hell of a throw. Big chunk. Let's go. So that is a wrap. Dak Prescott, nice game, big win. Uh, 
for me, I'm kind of most interested, selfishly, just seeing what Mike McCarthy looks like as a play caller. It's been a while. I personally thought it was super interesting to see how he incorporated some of what I would say is like old Mike with new age offense, RPOs, mesh, getting into quads, using motion, those types of things that just weren't maybe around the last time he was calling plays. I thought it looked really good. I thought it was interesting. For me, Dak also looked good. I think what Dak does well as far as being decisive, making good decisions, being smart with the ball, you know, that coupled with some accuracy issues when he goes to either throw it, drive it down the field, or really just ends up getting toesy, whether it's touch throws or whatever. When he puts all his cleats in the ground and he's in rhythm, I think it looks really good and smooth. When he kind of tries to get out and create, and maybe he's not quite as fast as he thinks he is anymore, or making good decisions, getting down the field with like protecting yourself, those types of things make me nervous, just as someone who wants to see quarterback play at a high level at the end of the year. But man, I really like the marriage right now of what that offense looks like, their skill position players, how they're utilizing those guys. And as it gets more connected, so meaning that the timing of everything looks a little bit more in sync, I think things will get even cleaner, which is a little scary for Cowboy fans because they've been rolling to start the season. I think it's probably going to get better and better offensively. So excited to see more. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.